I'm gonna level with you. I'm very scared right now. I'm gonna have to cook out 11 miles tomorrow morning uh, in my endeavor to be able to run the New York Marathon. Now, I, that, that, uh, that is a problem for tomorrow. Me, I'm gonna be in my big comfy bed at some point between now and then, which means I don't have to necessarily deal with it right now, but I am a little afraid. I am definitely a little scared uh, that, you know, while you're watching this, perhaps, I am going to be trying to haul my carcass 11 miles uh, uphill both ways in the snow and yet somehow also in the blazing heat. Any other potential challenges you could possibly think of. But I do want to let you know, I am running. I've already run 16 miles this week. Uh, I ran I eight miles on Monday and Tuesday. This is what you tuned in for, right? You wanted to hear about my running escapades. I mean, you guys have been bullying me to run, and I'm actually running, just trying to keep up the lore of the channel here. I mean, what is this channel without lore? Without lore, we would have nothing. But we would also have nothing if there weren't people partaking in serious, and I mean serious, like devastating amounts of tomfoolery. Now, there is, there is one aspect of child football. Let, let's say, like, uh, what, what would you call that, wherever you're from? Like, youth league? Yeah, youth league, travel ball, what, you know, church league, whatever it happens to be, right? The, the, the league you're playing in where you're a kid and your mom's bringing orange slices after the game, or maybe you didn't grow up in Florida, maybe it's apples. I don't freaking know, right? But the, you're getting some sort of fruit and everybody sucks and your shin guards wrap around your ankles, or maybe that's just me being old or something. Uh, there's one aspect of that that does translate pretty well to the professional game. That would be soccer parents, uh, right? Like football moms, just the, the, the kind of batshit crazy parenting that you get. I mean, obviously, Gio Reyna's parents going ballistic at the U.S. Federation is a great example. Uh, but there's, there's all sorts of examples of players' parents just being a little or a lot insane. But there's one part of like youth football, I mean, really young youth football, that doesn't typically translate to professional football or to organize top level. Let, let, let's drop the word professional. Let's just say adult football. And that would be relieving yourself on the field, right? That is not something that you would expect to see in a game played between adults. But I'm going to construct for you a situation where perhaps it might be considered acceptable to pee on the field. And in order to explain this situation to you in excruciating detail, we're going to need to go to Peru, right? Because we're talking about Copa Peru, because of course we are. We basically talk about Copa Peru every single day. Uh, and we're engaging with a match played between uh, Cantorcillo and Awahun, right? I was first made aware of this by uh, my boy Stokey G2 here, but th this is a match in Copa Peru. Uh, it's nil-nil, 72nd minute. Awahun is about to take a corner. And as Awahun is, is loading up to be able to go take that corner, but the goalkeeper for, what, what was it, Ken Torcillo? Uh, see, Ken Torcillo's goalkeeper is down. He has an injury. Now, according to this one article I found, this is Lucho Ruiz. Uh, who is down with an injury here. Uh, and that means that a player for Awahun, Sebastian Munoz, is waiting by the corner flag in order to take the corner, right? Because Awahun's won the corner. Sebastian Munoz is the guy that's supposed to take the corner, right? 72nd minute, nil-nil match, Copa Peru. This is a big moment. Very, very important moment. And it is during this delay where Mr. Lucho here is down with what doesn't seem to be too serious of an injury, and we've got just some lady from the stands kind of in there checking on him, uh, that the referee is notified that something fishy might be happening around the corner flag. Let, let's see if you can put a finger on this. Now, I want you to appreciate also, somehow, watching this match, one of two things is, is happening here. One, the announcer has decided to put an incredible amount of reverb on his broadcast. I hope that is the case. Although both options are awesome, that is the more hilarious of the two, that this guy has just decided on some sort of radio or small-time TV broadcast of the Scope of Peru match to just put a ridiculous amount of reverb on his voice. Maybe I should try that for this next bit. Okay, now the second part, the second option here is that the guy is actually 
broadcasting the event to the stadium, which would be why it would sound like this, right? The reason that it would sound like this. He's broadcasting the event to the entire stadium, that, with, that his voice is being broadcast over the PA speakers, which would also mean that the players on the field are actually listening to the announcer. So one of, you know, like, look, one of those two things is true. It's a very hard button to hit over here. But one of those two things is true. I, I'll let you decide which one it is, but it's definitely funny to listen to. So uh, here, uh, where's the ref? There's the ref. Somebody's going to notify the referee something's going on. Go, Ruiz. Yeah. You see, Mr. Number 25 here has decided to point towards the corner flag, and all of a sudden, goalkeeper Lucho uh, is not the, he's not the priority anymore. The referee looks over to the corner, and what does he see? But Sebastian Munoz peeing. He's peeing over the side. Now look, okay, 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 okay. Look, I know that you definitely can't have somebody just peeing in the middle of a match in an official competition like Copa Peru. But let's look at the damn setting for a minute. Nobody's looking at it. Nobody's getting a gander unless somebody's trying to watch under this door right here. Nobody's, you know, nobody's catching a full frontal here. Sebastian Munoz isn't catching a charge for doing this. I mean, for God's sakes, there's a cement machine hanging out over here. I mean, he's basically peeing on a tree. It's right next to a tree, right? He's peeing on some little cement wall that happens to be accompanying the field, which, by the way, seems like a massive health and safety hazard that perhaps Sebastian Munoz is protesting by urinating on. Right, apparently the referee is not even considering that this is an act of civil disobedience from Sebastian Munoz, and it's not just him, you know, he really had to pee, right? Uh, apparently, it is also frowned upon to actually relieve yourself in an organized way that prevents your pee from being involved, you know, from, from touching other players. Because if you do have to pee over the course of a match, and you pee in your pants then your Herald is like kind of a tough guy that doesn't want to give up on the match and leave. Sebastian Munoz, right? He waited until a nice break in the action. He's the guy taking the corner. He's already set the ball up, right? So he doesn't even have to worry about, you know, well, maybe I got a little pee on the ball because I peed, right? And, and you know, sometimes it's, you get a little inaccurate, right? So, you know, sometimes the targeting computer is not fully operational, right? And then you place the ball after you pee. Well, then, you know, that's just unsanitary. But he's already placed the ball here, which means... This is the most sanitary way that Sebastian Munoz could have done this in the first place. But yes, Sebastian Munoz is peeing on the side of the field. But this, I mean, this isn't a stadium, right? Okay, like it is one thing if James Ward-Prowse just whips it out before a corner playing at Manchester United. That would be a problem, right? But I, I, I don't see the issue here with Sebastian Munoz taking to the breeze uh, but I also understand the fact that if you're in an official competition like Copa Peru, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Now, the huge shout out is deserved for the guy that noticed this, right? Because if I saw this and I was just, you know, a lower league player in Peru, not really paying attention or caring about anything, right? If I saw this, I would just be like, oh, he's peeing. Cool. Right? Like, but this one guy's like, wait. The, we're in Copa Peru. This might actually be illegal. Gets the referee's attention and points it out. You know there aren't a lot of people at this game, too, when a player has to be the one to point the referee in the direction of a player that is quite literally taking a piss in the corner of the field, right? But I'll, 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 we'll let this play out. Free my brother Sebastian Munoz, though. Free him. He did nothing wrong. Sí, señor. Está orinando. But I'm gonna I'm gonna play it play it back. You can hear the announcer laugh. By the way. There it is. And he gets a roja. He he gets a he gets a red card. I, I like. I wonder what he's saying. I mean, a penny for his thoughts. I would love to know what this guy happens to be saying. I'm like, <laughs> he's, he's gesturing where he was being. He's probably saying all the same things that I was saying. This is, a, this is a construction site. There's nobody over here. I'm just peeing at a construction site. But look, in a civilized society, right, one of the things we have to give up is, is you know, the freedom to just be able to pee wherever you want, even if nobody's looking.
right? And even if you checked twice, right? Because, you know, maybe somebody is watching underneath the fence or maybe one of the construction workers or the next guy that goes and takes a corner doesn't want to smell your piss all over the cement behind it. But this is going in the hall of shame as one of the stupidest red cards you could possibly pick up. I want to know if Sebastian Munoz actually thought he was like, did he know Right, because if you actually think about this for five seconds, you have to know that you're going to get a red card if you just start peeing during the middle of a match. I mean, it's something that's so far out of left field, I don't even know if FIFA's got something in the rule book for it. But or did he really just have to go to the bathroom? I want a 60-minute style interview with Sebastian Munoz to find out exactly what was going through his head and what compelling argument he's making to the referee in this situation to try and say that he shouldn't be sent off. And one last shout-out to the absolutely absurd length of the grass on this field here. Because if Jurgen Klopp had to manage, if he had to manage a match on this field, he might have whipped out a lawnmower himself. This is the grassiest grass field of all time. Look at the height of that grass right there. I mean, if anything, you've got something to blame in the press conference. And I mean, if the grass is a little taller, you wouldn't even be able to see Sebastian Munoz taking a piss in the first place. And we wouldn't have had any of these problems. But again, free my brother Sebastian Munoz, probably a fair red card. And what the fuck is going on in Peru? Jeez.